Oh, nice. That's a sense of trimmers. For some reason, one of the studs just has a nut without a shoulder on it. I don't know why. Anyways. Oh, great. Well, that's a fail. There it is, battle. My 96 Oldsmobile. And you saw in the previous video that that transaxle is toast. It's really too bad. I ended up doing a tune-up recently, you know, spark plugs, wires, and filters and everything. It was a good car, but it is dead. And I think I am going to go ahead and sell it to the junkyard. So I am going to strip the parts off of it that I can use when I need to remove my ham radio setup from it and then the rest is gonna go to the salvage yard. So, you know, it's, it's difficult for a time. I thought, oh, well, I'll just go ahead and use this 96 Oldsmobile as a daily driver. But in the 21st century, you know, driving 70 miles a day, 30 plus miles to work and 30 plus miles back home, and then running to the grocery store and getting the kids and everything like that, this car just uh, couldn't do it. You know, it's almost 30 years old. When I was using it a while every day, it was one failure after another. It was power steering pump, a power steering hose, rack and pinion. And then one time I drove the family down to Texas to visit relatives over the holiday. And then coming back up, it uh, decided to blow the radiator. And uh, luckily, I was able to get off of the highway. You know, you can check out the forums if you want to about that. But I had a 90-plus uh, mile tow, you know, with the family. And the dog got to ride in the car with the windows cracked on the back of a tow truck. So you're supposed to keep the license plate sort of dented. Can you see it, Battle? I got rear-ended one time in this car. On my way home from work, I pulled the skin, the bumper skin back out. And so the only lasting damage was to the paint. Of course, the person uh, didn't have any insurance. And um, I guess just as well, you know, if they had insurance and they paid it out, they wouldn't have given me anything for this car since it's so old. It's really too bad battle. I, uh, didn't get to use this, but a couple of times as a mobile ham radio station. Of course, I'm gonna keep the radio and the radio mount and the antenna mount. So I don't know, maybe I'll install it on my Bullnotes truck or maybe I'll install it here in the shop. If it was permanently installed, then maybe I do ham radio more. If it's going to go to the salvage yard, I can leave the antenna and I can leave the Army veteran sticker. Go ahead and take that antenna mount off. This is a high quality antenna mount here. And if you look at all of the manuals that uh, the engineers do, the guys with uh, horn rim glasses, pocket protectors, and uh, slide rules, they've figured out that if you're running an antenna in your vehicle for a radio, it's actually best to uh, put it on the roof. And uh, you can see right here some flat strap that I did. I bonded the trunk lid to the body of the car. You can see I did... Uh, fluid film on that i ended up buying fluid film from the international shopping website and uh bought enough to last me forever since i only ever used it for this uh antenna mount i guess i should go ahead and take the mount off there's the antenna mount <laughs> i was never really happy with the bonding that i did you know, I want, you want the mount itself to be the same potential as the rest of the vehicle. But uh, anyways, 
it worked okay. I communicated on it and made a few contacts. Ugh. Here's a full size spare I got, Battle. These were the tires that I put on the car when I bought it. But uh, what I need to do is I need to take this wheel and tire and the two unmounted tires into a used tire shop uh, to try to get two good tires for my daily driver. So I'll do that eventually. Here is the OE Space Saber tire. So I'll put this back in the trunk. Let me go ahead and pull the battery. I just got a deep cycle battery for my ham radio auxiliary. Let's go ahead and pull her out and around to the garage in front. She's so cold, but I want to see if she'll start. Hasn't been started in well over a week. There's the fuel pump. She started. The burst. Anyways, battle. I had it underneath my 96 Oldsmobile and the transmission was still leaking even though I redid the pan gasket and the filter and the o-ring on the transmission dipstick tube that's about a month's worth of drip so my jalopies like to drip. But we'll go ahead and take this front license plate off. Might as well keep it. The 71 doesn't have a mount for a front license plate. The rocket ain't gonna fly no more, Battle. I thought I had little wing nuts on the bottom of these bolts that are holding this battery box in the trunk, but they are just normal nuts. So there we go. Oh, there's a there's a lock washer in there too. There's the battery box I got for the deep cycle battery. Ugh. Remember when we installed that? Okay, we had uh, negative and positive battery terminal and leads. You can see the bonding that I did right here. This is the negative battery terminal. I tried to bond everything together and I just used some uh, plumber's copper strap and installed it here in the trunk. And this is my coax cable, which I need to salvage. Now you have two types of grounds in a communication site. You have a multi-point ground and you have a single point ground. So a multi-point ground is supposed to ground metal objects that can carry RF energy that aren't designed to. So like the hood or the trunk. And then you have a single point ground, which a manufacturer says you shall ground this equipment from this grounding point on the back of like a radio. Take the bottom of the rear seat out now. Let's loosen this rear seat now. I better put everything back together so I can get as much money as I can from the carcass. Lefty, loosey, righty, tighty. How about it, Battle? Is the back of your car filled with kid stuff? This was underneath the seat in the back of my 96. A toy ring, some treats, some Legos, a plastic thing, all sorts of treasures. 
I have the window sticker for it still. It was $31,000 MSRP. Makes you wonder what kind of person bought it, what kind of person drove it. Have to remove all of this battle. It's a good fuse is there. You take something off and it fit together just fine and then it doesn't want to go back together the same way you took it apart. Finally, cantankerous son of a gun. <laughs> go figure, the nuts that I pulled off of these seat belts, the one that I'm tightening now was actually originally on the passenger side. And the one on the passenger side that fit was originally on the driver's side. How does that work, Battle? Explain it to me. Good and tight. All right. Let's get the bottom of the rear seat in. That side's latched, Battle. There. The rear seat's in. Make sure the kids didn't leave anything in here. Nope. All right. So... Probably should go ahead and remove the passenger seat battle. <laughs> I hate it. It's uh, not loose enough for finger, but a little bit too loose for the ratchet. Got it. There it is. That attached to the front foot of the seat uh, for the bracket that I would sit my ham radio on. We might not even have to take the seat out of the car. Because here's the bus bar right here. So, the seat is loose. It looks like... Aha! Uh -huh. I put my bus bar from one side to the other. And I got some grounds and a power wire, which I have two switches there underneath the dash that I need to pull out. And... There's one more bus bar in the engine bay, but since what I really want to save is this coax cable and this power connector for my radio and for my antenna tuner, I might uh, use my side cutters and uh, do some cutting here. Let's go ahead and take the fuzzy dice. We'll need those. And we got my Oldsmobile hat that we'll put in my 71. There we go. That's the coax cable that I wanted. I had gotten it uh, from a ham radio store, and it's uh, high quality. I used to be able to do connectors, but not anymore with my essential trimmers. What is that, uh, PL259 on that end, in that end? Make sure you use 50 ohm cable for your radio battle. Don't be going to uh, Radio Smack and buy 75 ohm cable or you're going to be hurting. So all of this right here battle is the wire loom that I removed from the car. These two are the most important antenna tuner power. This right here is for my radio. So there's uh, power and ground for my radio, which that would be ground that goes right into the back, but I also had ground to my radio, which was a single point, which went to the bus bar. This is power and ground from the two switches under the dash that we're gonna remove in a second. A good fuse, a good battery terminal. So now we're down to just a, a few stray wires and uh, I'll go ahead and remove part of this dash so we can get those switches and then we can get the uh, head unit and I'll put the OE head unit back in it. Okay. That I'm gonna keep battle. And some other stuff in here. I guess I might keep some of this. Here, the uh, glove box falls down. I have three of these pieces of wood trim. This one is the best one. There it is. Tilt, wheel, 
Yeah, I never have to tilt it down except for when I do maintenance. Because I'm such a tall guy. Ta-da! It's out. There we go. The vents come off. Just make sure you get the screws along the bottom to one other side. So now we got this aftermarket radio. Don't want to lose the remote control. This surround is from an aftermarket supplier online that you can get for an individual vehicle. And uh, the days of this piece of equipment are numbered because now, of course, all radios are integrated into a touch screen and a reverse camera. Had three screws. And she comes on out. We got my aftermarket radio. The good one. I put a cheapy one in my 71 Oldsmobile because for a while there I was like, oh yeah, old 64. I'm going to go ahead and sell my 71. And I never did. And uh, the cheapy head unit in my 71 sounds like junk. But this one is actually pretty good. There we go. There's the OE radio and it was a cd cassette there we go battle i just had it tucked underneath the a pillar cover there's the microphone go ahead and take it out of the kick panel here might as well do what right looks like don't want to be 10 up and two down do we battle there oh yeah three position Okay, we got some uh, good fuse holders here. Got that. A little bit of 12 volts DC biting me there. Got a good fuse. That was on my radio. And then I had fuses on the positive and the negative for the antenna tuner. Done. Everything's pulled out that I wanted to get. So I have parts that are going with it. That's the uh, lower dash. It's all going to go. This right here, the engine cover. The tote is staying. We got door panel pieces, they're all going, remember that switch, resistors for a blower motor are going, all right battle, I have the spare wheel and tire in my shop with a spinner or a wheel cover. So I'm going to take the four off of this car. So these are staying. Because for a set of busted up ones on Evil Bay, it's over $100. This is a belt tensioner with uh, heater core elbows. The 3.8 liter did that. It was sort of wonky. The directions for the trailer hitch that I never used because I wanted to mount a screwdriver antenna on it. Some hose for the rear suspension air pump. And then a spare rear suspension air pump. There's my 96 Oldsmobile. I salvaged the parts off of it. Overall, I think this was a good car even including the price of two sets of tires because the day I bought it, I had to put a set of tires on it that were black wall out. And then I put uh, 50,000 miles on those and I recently put these white walls on it. Total, I probably spent about $3,500, but now it is 100% dead. Not only did the 4T60E fail that you can see in a previous video, but the GM VATS key failed as well. 
when I moved the steering wheel yesterday to pull the dash apart to get the aftermarket radio, the wires going to the ignition cylinder broke because now I put either one of my keys into the ignition and it doesn't even activate the fuel pump. It just has a security light. So it's like a hundred different things that come together to say that it is time for this car to go to the great beyond. I called a salvage yard this morning and he said he could come out and pick it up. It's been a good ride and it's time to retire it. Thanks for checking out what I was doing in the garage today. Make sure you watch one of these other videos that I did on my 96 Oldsmobile in the past. And since this is the last video that my 96 Oldsmobile will be in, make sure you bid it a fond farewell.